Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Now, um, I'm going to get into this here on the top. I know that... Uh... I know that Crump has some stuff going on. So he's joining us here for the show specifically to talk about what's going on with um, the ATF and the Biden camp. And I will show you guys, if you really want more details on this, uh, go to AmmoLand. Let me see if I could pull up, pull that article up for you guys on screen. Uh, go to AmmoLand News. John just posted this article. The title is Unaccountable ATF Heads Colluding with Biden Transition Team to ban pistol braces. That's the article. Looks like there's a, a screen capture there. It says acting director Regina Lombardo and associate deputy director Marvin Richardson in a leaked conference call from November 10th, 2020. Um, John, can you fill us in on exactly what's going on here? You wrote this article you, and it this, this is like breaking news that came out in hours, right? Yeah, I actually released it while they were still on the call. So. Oh. <laughs> So wait, 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 they, wait, the ATF was still on the call that you're releasing screenshots of? Yes. Oh, damn. Yeah. <laughs> okay, They're... respect. Respect. Me. Yeah, so what, so fill us in on exactly what's going on here. I know you've got some sources that for good reason you can't reveal, but exactly what's happening here. Okay, the ATF, um, the Regina Lombardo and uh, Marvin Richardson, the two heads of the ATF, uh, have been contacted and are working with the Biden transition team, even though that nothing is certified yet. Mm -hmm. uh, and the Biden transition team asked them what their two prior top priorities were. And the two pro top priorities were, number one, to reclassify and ban like braces being used in AR pistols and, and other type of rifle pistols. Um, and also to uh, reclassify 80% lowers as firearms and, and basically demand that they get serialized, they be serialized. Okay. So, um, and, I, and I see someone's asking a question. Let me see who's asking this question here. Christopher Rodriguez says that includes metal and polymer in all forms. Um, yes. So, okay. Yeah, so... Cars, uh, Glocks, everything. Yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, this... I'm, I'm like half and half on this one, and feel free, Edgar, Joanna, anyone to jump in here, ask questions. From my point of view, I'm kind of not surprised, right? Uh, obviously, Biden is already out there preparing for his transition, even though we haven't decided who uh, who won the election so far as president, right? And there's obviously been lots of shenanigans, things are coming out every day of, of stuff that's going on. Um, I, and I heard that Biden's going to drop uh, executive orders pretty soon, or his planned executive orders. We already know the ATF is not happy about braces, and they, and they were planning on doing something about that before we even went into this election, and they kind of gave it a break. Um, but they were looking for political cover. The news about the 80% lowers is kind of out of the blue. So um, can you can you fill us in any more on that? Uh, the, Giffords is suing um, the ATF over their classification letter of 80% lowers. So okay. I was talking to Wilson today, and he had a good point. Um, he can make all um, after reading an article. He's like, what? He's like, you know what I think is going to happen? The ATF, uh, well, the DOJ, which is getting sued by Giffords, is going to drop the suit and go, okay, well, we're going to resend that letter, and ATF is going to make new regulations to 80% lowers. Mm -hmm. um, see that happening. They, they have this big fear of ghost guns, mm -hmm. which we all know is not really a thing. Mm -hmm. um, but that's what they are pushing, and the uh, braces, it will be a wholesale ban on braces. Okay. Um, so, Edward, I'm sorry. So, yeah, so the, the whole 80% thing, like, like 80%, is that just an arbitrary number? Like, they just don't care. They're just talking about anything? Because 20%ers exist, and, and 
um, other variations of? Or are they just looking at anything that could potentially be made into a firearm? Or like, I don't get it. Like, where were they getting? They said eighty percent lowers. Um, I don't have exactly. I mean, I have exactly what was said, but I don't know behind the scenes what yeah. the exact number that they're going to settle on is. Yeah, uh, and what they, the wording is going to be, right? Yeah. Or receiver. Uh, for handguns and ARs and rifles. Right, and yeah. manufacturers manufacturers buy 80% lowers. We were talking yesterday with Walter from Safety Harbor Firearms about that. Uh, I'm a, and I don't know what these people are going to do, but I'm going to assume that manufacturers can do it. What they want to do here is block people at home from making their own guns. Yeah, it'll basically just make the 80% lowers firearms. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So making uh, do-it-yourself at-home guns illegal, um, which it, it, that, that's going to go a long way to bad stuff. As far as well, I'm it concerned. just sounds like everybody who is concerned needs to buy a 3D printer. Um, yeah, so they can I, make their own lowers. Yeah. So, so these were the top two things on their list. Were there was there anything else in the list? Did you get a chance to read the whole transcript here or whatever it is you have? Uh, they said that was the top two things. Um, I'm sure that there's going to be other articles coming out with more stuff that was discussed. Yeah. In the mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know how I would know that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> com. just go there. In the next few days, you might see some mm -hmm. stuff. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. The whole script of the call. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, but so, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so uh, when they were still on the call, I tweeted to the ATF, the route to uh, Regina and Marvin over there. Mm -hmm. I tweeted them a picture of a screenshot from the actual call. Yeah, so you're really trying to get these guys going. I was just like, hi. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> so then the, the, I guess as somebody who is trying to be as objective as possible, the the logical thing is why doesn't Trump just get rid of them now? Well, okay, well if he can, and uh, well, I I had a theory. Why don't he doesn't? Just, yeah, I mean, he uh, fired. Just... Didn't he fire the sec def or something like that recently? Well, these guys are not pointed, so it's kind of harder. But okay. now like, I found out since I released my article that they are on retirement waivers. After thirty years in the government, you have to you have mandatory retirement. Unless you get a retirement waiver, so who Trump give, who can, gives you that? It, well, he can do is just revoke the waiver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, because okay, I think that was a good question that Edgar just asked. There, it really is. Isn't it wrong for these for these guys to be talking to the Biden campaign? Trump is still president, even if even if they manage to pull off this heist, right? He's president till sometime in January, right? Right or wrong? Yeah, well, yeah. So, so what are they I mean, what are they talking to Biden for? You know, why are they giving Biden like a wish list or whatever that is when we haven't even settled that particular thing? Yeah, usually they talk to him after the certification. Mm -hmm. Um, after the certification, that's when whoever becomes like so yeah, reelected re president or, or gets elected the mm -hmm. president elect. Mm -hmm. Um, but right now. Um, yeah, I don't know. That's a good question. Uh, the Biden transition team, they don't even have office space. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'm bumping up my audio. Let me know if this is better. I've bumped up my audio a little bit here. So hopefully, uh, hopefully that's working for people. I know I see some people saying that my audio is a little bit, my audio is a little bit lower. I'm thinking you guys are hearing me. Uh, you guys hear me loud and clear there? Let me check. Let me uh, see what's going on on this. Yeah, it should be. Just so, just let me know in the chat if that. Um, uh, Joanna, did you have any questions here? Not really. Uh, I was thinking the same thing. Why are these people still here? Um, that's pretty much it. I think. I. I mean, I don't know. I feel like Trump has a lot on his plate right now, so I don't think he's going to be too concerned about this at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I'm not going to really criticize anything right now. Um, on that end. So far as Trump? Yeah. Yeah, of course in the White House says that he is aware of my article. Okay, so um, before I get into how everyone feels about the ATF going after this, uh, Crump, I've been hearing that 
Trump had some pro Second Amendment stuff that he, like uh, executive orders or something like that that he was going to do before this election. Have you heard those same kind of things? Yes. Okay. So is that all <laughs> dead in the water right now? Um, is, is, would that even have an effect at this point? I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, some of the stuff that he wants to do uh, would definitely have an effect. I don't want to get into too much of what it is. Mm -hmm. I don't want to telegraph anything. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, he is. Uh, there is other... There is other, um, I guess you can say, forces pulling him in the other direction mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. I don't want to go ahead and name those people or anything. Mm -hmm. um, but, um, uh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm going to name the person. Okay. So what do you think about all this, man? What's your, what's your gut reaction to this? Um, and then I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask Edgar and Joanna to jump in with their gut, gut reactions. My gut reaction is they wanted to do this all along. I mean, mm -hmm. it, looking back at documents from like two years ago, they mm -hmm. wanted to ban. They didn't think they had a political capital. Mm -hmm. Now, see, well, Biden possibly might be coming in. Now they're saying, well, now we had the political capital and the political cover, mm -hmm. uh, political cover, to mm -hmm. be able to pull off like this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so let's say um, let's say this becomes a reality, right? So that we're seeing executive orders. And all this kind of stuff. Uh, what would you, huh? We just they would just reclassify it. Uh, they would just revoke all the letters. And uh, remember, there's no really, there's no real standards for uh, pistol braces. So they just revoke the letters and pin in the standards the pistol braces that there's no such thing as pistol braces. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're definitely pistol braces. But yeah. Eighty percent, the same thing. Revoke the letter. Um, in fact, with the Giffords lawsuit, they don't even have to revoke the letter. They just have to, uh, like, let the case go, and then the letter will get revoked, and then just put up new standards. I mean. Okay. Um, yeah. Edgar, what, what's your... Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of on the same. I mean, we have been seeing this flip-flop for, for a while. You can't shoulder it. You can't shoulder it. You... Um, it, it's, we've been seeing this for, for quite some time already, something that they've been wanting to do and they just been pretty hesitant on, um, you, you would like to believe that it was because of Trump that they were a little hesitant. Um, it was, um, yeah. And I don't know, it, it just, this whole <laughs> election thing. And Biden talking when he shouldn't be talking, and I don't know. The whole thing is just—I don't know if it's the the hiv that I got going on, but it, it's it making you—it's giving you the heebie-jeebies, right? Because <laughs> <laughs> that's how I feel. I'm getting some serious heebie-jeebies. Joanna, what do you think about this? Uh, <clears throat> like I said, I'm—I feel like Trump's had a really crappy uh, term. He can't mm -hmm. catch a break. So mm -hmm. I know a lot of people are really pissed at him for not doing something about the ATF, but I don't really, you know, if you really stop and think about how much he's had to deal with, um, I don't blame the guy. You know, it's not, it wasn't one of his priorities. Mm -hmm. I do think that they're using this uh, maelstrom that we have right now in DC um, as cover, like you said. And I don't know. I just feel like I, I agree that they, they were probably going to go after braces for a while. And yeah, like I said, everybody uh, who's concerned should uh, maybe get a 3D printer, and that's all I got to say about that. Right, right. Um, yeah, th yeah, that's definitely not a, a bad idea. You know what? Look, before the election, this stuff came out, right? From the ATF issued a letter to um, Q, and we were all talking about the honey badger. Uh, John, yeah. I think you published that they also issued it to other companies, right? Yeah, the four other companies uh, got the letter. Okay, um, yeah. Do we know exactly. the names of those companies, or those companies are still negotiating in the background with the ATF? Uh, they're still negotiating in the background with the ATF. Um, okay. I want to know. I want to know what the, who these companies are. I know that you know because you're a journalist, and and I respect that, man. You know, we we I'm glad that you're able to bring us this kind of stuff. But I pers I want to know about these companies that are out there negotiating instead of uh, being like uh, Q. Right. 
and coming out here and SB tactical and coming out and standing up and saying, no, this, you know, this is not right. And we're going to fight back against this. Why are these companies still hiding from their customers and trying to negotiate something with these guys? And, and with this news and with uh, with the news of the elections, it's probably even more leverage on the side of the ATF against them, right? Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. I don't, I, I don't think the negotiations, negotiations are going to be successful now. Mm -hmm. Maybe they will. I know a couple of the companies, instead of saying, hey, what Q did, and say, hey, you know, the ATF is saying this, they just uh, took their pistols and marked them as sold out on the website. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, when, when do you think we're going to know about these companies? Uh, I would say pretty soon. Um, once my uh, Freedom of Information Act comes through, which should be any day now, mm -hmm. that's their basic deadline to uh, us up. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I really, really want to know because I think now is not the time for, for companies out there, um, you know, in the firearms industry to, to, you know, to not have a spine. I'm trying to be nice. <laughs> It's, it's time to like actually stand up and fight if you really believe in what you're manufacturing and what you're making. It's time to stand up and fight for that. L let's talk about the 80% stuff, right? There's Polymer 80, um, a bunch of other companies out there looking at this. Um, have you heard from any of those people? What do you think is going to be the reaction of companies that specifically built their business around 80% everything, right? Handguns um, and all, on up. Hank, you were the first one to know, so you knew hours before everyone else did. Mm -hmm. um, everyone else found out at like around five ish. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I talked since then. I talked to Cody Wilson, who said, "Yeah, we kind of knew it was going to go this way. We were just expecting it um, mm -hmm. from di distributed." Uh, mm -hmm. Talked to a few other people. Um, that are in the industry and i guess everyone kind of knew it was happening i know there's at least one company that I talked to one of the people that was saying, you know talking about it on the call and they were kind of pissed because that person they talked to the to that same day and they said oh no we're not planning to do anything and then they went on the call and said yes we are yeah yeah it, this makes me really mad. I don't know what the folks out there feel. I'm going to assume the gun guys out there are really mad about it. And it's not just about the braces. It's just like it, it wasn't just about the bump stocks. It's not just about the braces. It's not just about the 80% or anything else. It's like they're going to take one thing, then take another, then take another. And it's just paper cuts until we're like bled out on the floor. That's yeah. why paper cuts. Yeah. That's the thing that makes me mad. Me personally, um, I'm going to tell you guys, like, the way that I look at it, like, we are the resistance now. We're the resistance. I'm not going for any of this crap. You know, yeah. this part part of this I know has to do with Trump and, and him becoming president. I think that's, you know, he needs to fight the fight and and do what he's going to do. But it, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter to me who's the president, whether it's Trump or Biden. Right. Whether it's a Republican or a Democrat, you know, I'm going to fight for freedom and I'm going to fight for gun rights for people in this country. And these are things that just like back in the days when they made a vial of crack, you know, into a, a felony. And then, you know, you got like mandatory years and all that kind of stuff. That's what we're looking at here. And, and I know the people who are going to suffer the most from this. Um, you know, and this is in, this is insanity. Just think about how many. Think about how many braces are out there. Think about how many 80% lowers are out there, right? How, how are they really going to enforce this? Who are they going after? Okay, yeah, there's no... Matthew, Matthew is, he's, he's, he's fired up right now. So, <laughs> um, th th this is, this is going to affect a lot of people. I think there were a lot of people, there were a lot of bump stocks out there, but everyone was like, oh, I don't even want to admit I, I have a, a bump stock or, you know, or that I want to fight for that thing. And it's all leading in this direction. And now these guys have uh, the cover to go in there. And uh, I don't know, man, it's, um, you know, I think it's, it should be a wake up call to people out there. Yeah. Well, I got to go and do homework with Matthew. Yeah. 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 That looks like. Yeah. I would let Matthew run around the block a couple times. 
<laughs> you know, yeah, um, I don't think you're going to get much uh, uh, sitting him down and doing math right now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you're going to have to let him run around a little bit. Okay, listen, uh, Crump, thanks a lot, man. Um, thanks so much for your reporting. I know that's put you in the crosshairs of lots of different people out there. Um, just real quick for the folks out there who want to support you, how can they do that? Uh, head over to John Crump 2 and subscribe. I have a Patreon at patreon.com slash John Crump. Uh, all, I'll give you a shout out. All proceeds. <laughs> um, shout out I, to Matthew, by the way. <laughs> shout out to Matthew. You're the most awesomest. I have a loose too. I know, I know. You're going to get some money for that. <laughs> not. <laughs> Yeah. My loose tooth's going to fall out. I think so. guys. All right, Crump. Thanks so much. Appreciate it, man. Bye, Matthew. Good night. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, yeah. I just got to say, I think John Crump is one of the most interesting human beings alive. (laughs) (laughs) He is. He's a pretty cool dude. He's a pretty cool dude. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.